Welcome to episode 52, what to expect when marketing in 2021. Welcome to the PR Playbook Podcast with Ranjini Joshua, the only podcast that teaches you how to strategically navigate the world of public relations and social media and grow a powerful brand. Hi, and welcome to episode 52. Today, we're going to talk about uh, what to expect in 2021. I know we're all hoping that it's going to be the end of the COVID era and we're going to have a little bit more normalcy, but it, it looks like that maybe 2021 will probably be very similar to 2020 with the caveat that we are better prepared to create new strategies and creative content in 2021. So I just thought I'd kind of talk about a few things that might be easier in 2021 20, and things that you should consider that you'll want to focus on with your marketing and PR plan. Now I'm integrating marketing and PR together because they are very much hand in hand in this situation. And I had written an article last year on Forbes on PR and marketing during a crisis. And those caveats were actually very true. They, they rang true throughout the year. It was about expanding your digital content, trying out video, trying out podcasts, things like that. But I think um, there is an extension of those PR and marketing strategies from 2020 that are going to be really put to the test in 2021 because everyone's finally gotten used to being at home, working from home, creating more digital content. You've got just like an ocean of content to choose from. But the great thing is people are eager, eager to consume it. So there's five major areas that I think will support your growth in the coming year. And if you stick to this, I think you're going to have a fantastic year. So first things first, content is king. Marketers have always known this, but it's truer now more than ever. You need to create content. If you're not creating content that lives in the digital space, then you're definitely losing out. If you don't have a blog on your website, if you're not writing articles and posting them, if you're not active on social and This doesn't mean that you have to be on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any of those. Actually, it's best if you pick maybe the one or two that are the most easily authentic to your brand. So for example, for the Silver Telegram, as a PR agency, LinkedIn is really our place that we shine. We do post some Instagram content. We do tweet a little bit, but Instagram is where I focus my heavy PR messages and content. So Pick a couple of avenues where you find your target audience the most and use that to deliver your content. So make sure that you're, you know, casting a wide net, but also creating content that's very useful and thoughtful as well. Second, humanize. There's always fun catchphrases and clickbait, but at the end of the day, what I've been seeing more and more of and what we're going to see more of in 2021 is human content. People have come to realize that everyone is just a human. So talk to them in human terms. Like, you know, be genuine and address their challenges and talk about what may touch them on a daily basis. And we've heard this from media friends that, you know, solve a real problem for them. Um, I know there's a lot of digital fatigue right now. So if you can be as personable as possible, humanizing your content will go a long way. Okay. Third, focus on a niche. And, you know, if you've ever been in business coaching and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably have, they always say hone in on a niche, but now is really, really the time because you don't want to be a small fish in a big pond. You want to carve out an expert area, a a niche that you can lead in. And so in the same vein, make sure that your brand is resonating as closely as possible on your brand message. So drive your brand message with a pinpoint focus, play big in smaller ponds, create brand loyalty among a very, very targeted audience. And while it seems like, oh gosh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm baking myself out of these bigger conversations. You're really, really not. Having a niche makes you an expert. And when that person needs an expert in that field, they'll come to you. So don't, don't worry. Don't stress too much about working your way out of some jobs. Yeah, sure. You, you might work your way out of some jobs, 
but the more specific, the more fruitful and the, the jobs that are have more longevity are going to come to you because you belong in a specific niche. Um, it'll give you better direction and focus. It'll give you better messages and clear messages and a really direct way for you to market and do PR in the new year. Expand your creative high horizons. Number four, pushing back to content creation. Kind of the first thing that we talked about content is king expand the way you deliver that content. So I love to deliver content on this podcast. It's really easy for me to talk. I feel really natural when on the, on the, on the microphone, but I also love writing. So writing is a great way. Uh, podcasting is a great way for me to deliver content. I am not a huge fan of creating social media posts. It's just not my favorite thing to do. So what I do is I create the content that I love the most, and then I have other people chop it up and put it into social media for me. So create the content that you love the most and do the same thing. While time and money is always a consideration, a test field for creativity is really diversifying the way you create and deliver content because you want to be able to do dynamic things and engage with your audience in a better way, especially if you're, you know, going into a niche. So um, video content performs really well on LinkedIn Obviously, it performs really well on Instagram as well. Actually, video content, I think, performs well on all the major social channels, except Twitter. So make sure that, you know, you're identifying what content performs best on those channels and delivering it that way. Now, again, you can create one piece of content. Let's say right now I'm recording this podcast. I'm recording on Zoom, but if I did a video recording, I could chop it up and create a video. Great. And people don't need to see super polished um, media these days. They are comfortable with seeing raw footage. They're comfortable with hearing raw footage. So just don't let that stop you. You don't need the latest equipment. You just need a really good mic, um, maybe a nice camera, maybe some lighting, maybe a, a ring light or something like that. And just try it out. You know, you won't know how you feel about it until you dip your toe in that water. Never stop learning is my last one. So I just was talking to someone about masterclass last week and how they have just a slew of online learning. And I've talked to about five people in the last week that have just talked to me about how excited they are to take different classes and learn on masterclass and, and watch different webinars and watch YouTube videos. I mean, everyone is consuming content and they have lots of varied interests. So focus while focusing your attention and skills is important to running a business. It's never too late to learn a new skill, try it out, see how your audience loves it. I think taking digital courses, creating digital courses, people are ready to consume and learn. So if you have a business where you can teach someone something, do that. I think pulling together a quick course um, is actually easier than you think. It could be, you know, spending a day making recordings on Zoom. And then alternatively, you know, taking courses to, you know, learn how to do graphic design. I think during this past year, I've learned how to do so many different things. Um, I've improved my content writing skills. I've improved my email marketing skills. I've improved my graphic design skills, which trust me is still very rudimentary, but they're better than they were before because everyone's online. Take advantage of this, invest in professional development during this time And that way it might even give you really amazing ideas on what to do for your brand and um, what to do for your target audiences, what, what they like and ask their opinion. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can engage and talk to your audience right now. So the five things that I want you to focus on in 2021, especially when creating a PR and marketing strategy, number one, content is king. Make sure you're creating awesome, useful, authentic content. Number two, humanize your messages, all your brand messaging, humanize it, bring it down to earth. Number three, focus on your niche. Be as specific as you can when you're talking about your brand, when you're talking about your audience, when you're talking about your product and who it serves, challenges it meets, all those things. Number four, expand your creative horizons. Try something new, get out of your comfort zone. And last but not least, number five, never stop learning. Take a course, build a course, launch a course, whatever you want to do, just make sure you understand that, you know, we are in a learning paradigm here. Everyone is kind of learning online. 
Um, my kids are learning online. I'm learning online. Um, so it should be the same for your target audience. It should be the same for your employees. I think it's an amazing employee incentive for people who are doing remote work. So try these things out. There's always a silver lining. And I think the silver lining of 2020 was that it pushed us out of our comfort zone, socially, physically, and mentally, and taught us how to be more resourceful, more creative, better at what we do, because we really need to be good at, at this point. You can't just, you know, mill around the office. You really have to be good at what you do. So sharpen those skills and I will see you next time. If you have any tips, suggestions, feedback on this podcast, please email me at podcast at the silver telegram.com. Until later, be safe and stay well. Stay well.